I knew it. Another Heard at Media production. I'm turning the tables. I'm turning the tables. your seat for the queen of New Jersey, Teresa Judah. How are you guys? Oh, oh my God, I love all the love. Oh my God, I love, love, love. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Oh my God, it's so nice to be here. Hi. Uh, how are Ain't you? she a bad bitch? Uh, Doesn't Teresa look the fuck good? Doesn't Carlos look the fuck good? Yes. Yes. I'm, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do my Gia Julie's pose. <laughs> Are y'all ready to have some fun tonight? Yeah, oh my God, this place is beautiful. I saw Andrew Dice play here. No, it's good. Yeah, I love. I, I wasn't in this room. We were downstairs, right, babe? Yeah. So, hi guys. This is so fun. No, I told you. Listen, listen. You are my friend. You're, you're, you're my. Yes. Wait, guys. I, I have to apologize in front of all of you. No, really, because I made a mistake. And I forgot to invite Carlos to my wedding. Like, I, I swear to God, like, and I really, like, I felt so bad afterwards. I was like, Carlos, I'm so sorry. Because I, you know, I started the show with him. Like, I absolutely love Carlos. Like, I love, love, love him. But, you know, it was like a crazy time. And a lot was going on with the show. And my mind Don't was like. know it. Yeah. <laughs> So and I forgot. So I apologize, Carlos. I love you dearly. No, and what I said to Teresa is our friendship is not predicated on that. But I love you anyway. But give it up because she is the longest running original Housewife season one. <laughs> so listen, listen. Wait, I, wait, it, wait. I think Tamara is. Season one. Season one. Oh, see. Season one. Okay, so tell me. Tamara came season two. Oh, okay. And we love Tamara. We love Tamara. Wait, and what about Kyle? What about Kyle? Kyle was season one too, but your show happened before theirs. Oh, so I am the first one. Yes. <laughs> so with that, honey, I have thank a surprise you. for you. All right, all right, thank you. <laughs> Well, because I, I get confused because um, Orange County. Ah, uh, thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you. So beautiful. I believe in giving people their flowers while they're alive. So congratulations on a, you are the original housewife, season one, original OG. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Oh, my God. They're beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. I love gifts. Yeah. Yes. No, we, we listen. We have a lot of gifts. The tree huggers are in the building. Uh, okay. And the raindrops. So, listen. You and I started the Real Housewives of New Jersey together. Yes. And what I want tonight to be is this. We know what's happening all around the world and blah, blah, blah. But, look, I believe strongly that is time to celebrate people. And this woman has given so much to the art of reality television. Because I don't know too many women that can flip a table. I don't know too, too many women that could run down a country club in six inch heels. I don't know too many women who could push down Andy Cohen to get to another woman. You know what I mean? So we call her Teresa Tyson. <laughs> Just so y'all know. But talk to us first, though, Teresa. How did you get started to become one of the greatest reality stars of all time? Um, 
I guess being real, being myself. Like I, guys, I don't know. I mean, I guess you guys have been watching me for so long now. It's like what you see is what you get. I don't know how to be fake. And like whatever comes out of my mouth comes out of my mouth. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, I, I don't like, I don't like think about what I'm going to say ahead of time or anything like that. And yeah, I just go into the scenes being who I am. Like, you know, I don't, I don't like, like, oh, I'm going to say this. Or I don't go after anybody maliciously. I really don't. Like, and it's gotten really ugly, our show. I can't talk about it. But it's like, you know, it just changed. It's not like what it was when we first started. Well, I, w- I want to get to when we first started because season one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about season one. So when you were cast for the show... How did they find you? Were you recommended by another housewife that was on the show at the time? Like, how did it come about for Bravo to to discover you? Um, Jacqueline and Dina recommended me. Yeah, they went to this um, salon called Chateau in Franklin Lakes. And they were looking for, like, beautiful women with a beautiful house, you know, the whole package. So the owner of Chateau recommended Dina and Jacqueline. And then they interviewed them. They loved them. And then Dina, then they asked Dina and Jacqueline, like, do you have any other friends? And they're like, you know, they both said, oh, my God, you got to interview my friend Teresa. She has these three little girls. They're so cute, the way she dresses them. And um, so they came over to my house, and they just interviewed me right in front of my house, like, as Joe's doing construction on the house. And Joe wanted no part of it. <laughs> he was just like, and they they talked to us, and um. And they're probably like, this is going to be good TV. You know, like I, you know. and Joe was just like, whatever. He's like, whatever you want to do. I don't care. You know, you know how Joe was. And um, that was it. And they followed me for 11 and a half months because everybody else signed the contract right away. You know, cause you know, it took me 11 and a half months to sign a contract. Why? Wait, that's T. Why is that? I don't know if you know that. Did you? I, I did not know oh that. Oh my God. Yeah, so I did. Everyone else signed the contract right away. I was the last one to sign. They chased me, swear to God, for 11 and a half months. They would call me every week, every week. Did you change your mind? Do you want to do it? 11 and a half months. Yeah. That's because you are Yeah. So, because I didn't know what I was going to get my, I, I didn't understand that my Jersey, it was supposed to be called Jersey Moms. It was. That's yeah, true. Yeah. So I was like, and I'm like, what is this? I didn't know what, it, what I was getting myself into. I was like, this is, is this fake? Like, what is this? Like, I didn't know. And then, so then I signed it because Jacqueline, matter of fact, we just, t- I just had her on my podcast and we were turning the tables. So Jacqueline, I didn't even have a lawyer look at my contract. I signed the contract. Teresa, girl. I know. Well, because th- this was before the legal stuff. <laughs> so Jacqueline. We can't be signing contracts, Teresa, without I looking at the babe. <laughs> so Jacqueline's like, come on, let's just do it. They're just going to do- follow us around, do what we normally do. And I was just, all right. So I signed the contract and gave it to Dina. We went to the FedEx box and she put it in the FedEx. That was it. Yes. And here I am, 15 years later. Yeah. What, what was your reservations about joining the show? Were you just like, because the thing is this, when Jersey first came out, the only Housewives that was airing at the time was O.C., and New York just started to air. Atlanta did not air yet because I left, I just wrapped Atlanta, and I got a call two weeks after wrapping Atlanta to do Jersey. So did you do your research? It was like, is this No, for me? I didn't do no research. <laughs> I never watched the other shows. I mean, what well, you know what was playing on my house? Like all well, car- like cartoons, you know. I had the I had the kids. So like, you know, Dora the Explorer, all that, you know. <laughs> Elmo with Barney. Yeah, that was playing out in my house. No reality TV. Yeah, no, none of that. Were you nervous about getting in front of the camera? No, no, not at all. Because it, it was that was easy to me. It was just I didn't know. I didn't understand it. I was just like, what is this? Is it a joke? I, I didn't know what it was. So, yeah, I didn't know. And then I kept asking Joe, I'm like, should I do it? And I'm like, is everything good with you? He's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, ladies, I mean, ladies, I 
always make sure you check your man's bank account. Yes, I know. You check the safe. So, <laughs> and that you have three witnesses before you sign something. Okay, girls? That's the vibe. So I, I asked Joe, is everything good? You know, can I do the show? Yeah, Tree, Tree. Do whatever you want. Do the show. I don't, I just want to, I don't want no part of it. He's like, I, you know, he's like, I don't, he's like, you could film. I just don't want to be in it. He's like, you know, because he really didn't want to be in front of the cameras. So, um, so that was it. I was like, all right, I'm going to do it with my friends. And that was it. But then they suckered him into it, obviously, as you guys all saw. Yeah. So when, when, when so when the first, um, when the show first started, I remember meeting you and I was so fascinated by you because you were just so down to earth. You were very real. Obviously you were on a show with sisters who were married to brothers. Right. Simmer down, girls. <laughs> Simmer down, okay? Like the steak over at, okay? All right, so one thing that I don't think we ever talked about, because I'm gonna give the audience a lot of exclusive, because that's what I came here for, right? Yeah. Okay, one thing we never talked about is, when we were filming season one, the families were very protective of what they were going to talk about. Do you remember that? Yeah, I mean, they didn't tell me. Yeah, you probably knew more than me. Obviously, he's a producer. Ooh, is that shade? <laughs> <laughs> I think you knew more than me, Teresa. No, they didn't tell me. No. No, they did not tell me. When you were filming, because the thing about you, you were so transparent about your life and what was going on, did you feel like some of your other cast members weren't as transparent as you season one? Yeah, I didn't know a lot of the stuff that was going on. They didn't, like, tell me, you know, everything. They really didn't. So, and, like, I think there was stuff going on with the family that I didn't know because, you you know, because remember at the reunion, they all got mad at each other. But your chosen family. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I never thought my family would come on the show, but mm, thought oh, wrong. This room is full of your family. Yeah. So, so you are you are in good hands. So, so season one, Danielle came on, right? Yeah. And talk about a firecracker. I liked Danielle. I it was season one. Oh no, Danielle was everything. I mean, yeah. he liked. We all liked Danielle. Oh, well, oh, I don't know about everybody, but oh, me, me and him liked Danielle. Oh, no. Yeah, we did. Yeah, Teresa used to be like, "No, this would be Teresa." <laughs> so, like, what is Danielle doing? Like, is she, is she, is she like, what, what, is, what is she giving you? Is she, is she, is she, is she giving you that? I mean, you know, I mean, like, is that what you want? Like, what is it? I'm like, no, Teresa, this be you because Danielle, any woman that enters the scene in a bikini. And wedges, platform hills, to walk to her backyard pool, <laughs> to sit in the sun wearing Givenchy sunglasses. You had me at hello. Yeah. So, did you feel like when it came to Danielle, was it like, oh, she is definitely right for this case? Yes, definitely. I thought she, I'm like, she was great TV. She really was. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. I I know good TV when I see it, and she was definitely good TV. So where so during that season, the book uncovered, right? So do you all have a signed copy of that book? <laughs> if, if not, if not, I'm selling it at my merch table. Okay, for nineteen ninety nine. In case you want cops without a badge, okay, just let me know. It's it's back there. How did you find out about the book? Well, I found out about the book from, I think it was Dina and Jacqueline. Like they were taught, but they knew about it more than me. It's like, it's like they, everything was like, yeah. And then I really found out about the book at the, when I flipped the table <laughs> at that dinner. Yeah. Cause they all like, it's like, I'm telling you, cause they, I don't think they wanted to tell me everything because, you know, just because I guess I just say it the way it is. And maybe they wanted me to keep things more under wrap. And they were like a little bit more secretive than I was, which is fine with me because I didn't care. But then when I found out about the book, that's why I was like, wait, there must be something else. What, what, you know, like <laughs> there must be something else, you know, you know. Like, yeah. And then the reason why I got really upset is because she was attacking Dina and Dina was not, a, you know, I could she doesn't like to fight. So I had to step in there and I, I had to do what I had to do. Yeah. <laughs> 
The biggest mystery of season one is the fact that who brought the book to the forefront, right? I did! No. Now, why am I in it? <laughs> Wait, so I, and I swear, I didn't see, I heard he crawled underneath the table and put it underneath Danielle's feet. I swear I didn't see, I swear to not see it. No, look, I did listen, not see that. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But when one of the biggest mysteries, though, right? Because we're all fans of Jersey, right? Okay. So one of the biggest mysteries, though, is when Caroline Manzo at the table was giving Godmother. And I think you understand what I'm trying to say here. Right? So it was. I love Caroline, by the way. It was, it was fascinating because the biggest argument at the table was the fact that who brought the book to the front front, the forefront. Danielle said it was Dina. Caroline said, no, me. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> it was me. And you know, we're all like this, like, ah, right? It was very scary. Who brought the book? Was it really Caroline or was it Dina? I don't. I don't know. See, they didn't tell me. I don't. I, I thought it was you. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. He he put it underneath the table. I don't know. It was one of them. You know what? I never ever asked. I swear, I never, never asked. asked. Ne- never asked. Okay. I never asked. I'm telling you, I didn't know about this book, like, because they were. Because you know what? I think it was amongst the family. Things were going down against with them, with the family that I didn't even know about. Like, there was, yeah, I mean, there was stuff going on that I didn't even know about. Yeah. And I think in hindsight... I mean, you you probably know more than I do. Now, Teresa, you ain't gonna throw me under the bus. No, but seriously. They, you talk, because you know she has a new podcast, right? Turn it to tape. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> no, but I really didn't know. They didn't tell me. Like They, they, they kept it amongst the family. They really no, did. So the producer, so we did find out about the book, right? So I remember, I'm like, I'm an associate producer. I'm like this young producer. I'm living. We got to get Jacqueline here. Then Jacqueline was saying. Yeah, no. So like, so the book came to the the producers. Like, it's this book called Cops Without a Badge. And it's like the biography of like Danielle Staub, her name was Beverly, right? So then I'm like, it's like the Beverly Center. Is it like the Beverly Hillbillies? Like, what are we talking about here? So I was assigned because I'm, I'm like a book nerd. You know, I was a part of Oprah's book club and everything. <laughs> I'm a scholar. So, like, here's my gay ass at home on a Friday night reading the book. And, like, what did Beverly do? Like, what the fuck? Like, I was, like, going crazy. So then we... <laughs> yeah, I think they found the... I think one of them found the book and then they read it. And they're like, oh, my God, what did we get in, ourselves involved with? Like, you know, yeah. And then they started reading it and who this woman was. And they're like, why did we get this woman involved with us? And that's how it all... Right? Yeah, no, and that's how it all happened. So long story short, because the infamous table flip occurred. So th- remember, okay, remember back in the day on Housewives and... <laughs> And how, like, um, in the early days of Housewives, like, the finale was, like, this, like, all-cast event. And you had the kids at the kids' table. Like, we we had fucking Chris and Albie, like, at the the kids' table with, like, with with, with a young two-year-old Melania. You know, like, but, but, like, but, like, back in the day, you had to do that. So, like, we had this, um... (laughs) I know, and, and then I made sure I, I'm like, can the kids leave that leave here? Remember? Yeah, no, I, no, I, I no, said, can it the was kids? true. It was I'll true. So when Danielle walked in with her LBD and for all the straight men who are here, all two of you, that is called <laughs> a little black dress. So Danielle comes in with the LBD, and she brought the book. So <laughs> as a producer, I'm assigned certain people. Like on Atlanta, I had Needy and Kim Zosiak. Right? Which is why my hair has fallen out. I have to paint it. <laughs> so, so I had those two in Atlanta. So on New Jersey, I had Danielle and Teresa. 
Those were my house locks that I was responsible for, right? So Danielle comes in in her little black dress with this big ass book. And I'm like, well, you can't walk in with the book, girl, because you're wearing an LBD. Oh, so, you see? So, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> no. So, Danielle, no. Was- so, you know me. Listen, I am, you know, ambitious. <laughs> and I believe in being an A student. So I said, well, just hand me the book. And, I'll, and she said, but how am I going to, like, present on the table? And I'm like, we'll worry about that later. <laughs> so she walks in, and the moment Danielle Staub walks in, the room goes quiet. <laughs> so what you guys don't know is 20 minutes was passing by, and nobody was talking. <laughs> <laughs> so girls, guys, and gays, OK? <laughs> Imagine being at a brunch where you're at the table and no one's talking for 20 minutes. It was not 20 minutes. A girl, it was 20 minutes. <laughs> no, because this, no, this, this, this is what they did. This is what they did. <laughs> so we were eating. Uh... You, know, you, know, you were eating, and then, you know, you know Melania's crying, and then Albie Manzo was like, what do I do? I'm like 16. So we were like, ugh. They're not talking to each other because the elephant in the room was Danielle and her LBD. Yeah. So <laughs> here I am, again, being the scholar. And I'm like, I mean, I think we should, like, you know, uh, break the book. And they were like, well, how's the book going to come out? And I said, I'll handle it, right? <laughs> so this is me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't believe he even did that. So this is the book, right? So this is what happened. So they're filming, and I have the book in my possession. <laughs> so Teresa's at the head of the table because it's her event, and Danielle's right there. So I knew if I walk in with the book, guess what? I, like, spoiled the surprise, right? <laughs> so this was me with the book. So they're filming, and I walk in, and I do this. <laughs> 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 so this is me yes I'm in this position pause okay so I'll be in this position later tonight don't worry okay so that's if I <laughs> that's, that, that's if I'm lucky okay so so do y'all remember when Danielle put the book so what happened was I tapped her kneecap like this because that was cold for like bitch get this book so then so then I do this she 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 gets the book and that's when she did this guys yeah she put it on the table yeah so that's what happened and then Teresa choked on her lamp top (laughs) Dina eyes bugged and said, these bangs need to grow two more inches to cover my entire blue eyes. This is, this is, this is no shade. Jacqueline was like, it's about fucking time. Yes, yes. Right, Teresa, yes. right? Yes. Because Jacqueline was sick of that shit. She was like... Yeah, Jacqueline brings it, yeah. <laughs> Jacqueline totally brings it, yes, yes. Okay, so that's how the, the book came about. And if listen, we have an amazing journalist named Dave Quinn in the building who wrote the amazing book, <laughs> Not All Diamonds and Rosé. He wrote the book along with the amazing Andy Cohen. So this is in the book. So if you guys want to know more about this conversation, pick up the best-selling book. It's really good, okay? So I want to know that. Okay, so then... The book's on the table. So when the book came on the table, real talk, Teresa, what was going through your mind? I was like, oh, my God. I was like, yeah, I was shocked, too. I was like, um, you know, I'm like, okay. So I'm telling you, I really didn't know about the book. I really didn't know much. So I was like, when she said, no, I didn't. I swear. (laughs) Guys, it was between Caroline, Dina, and Jacqueline. They wouldn't tell me everything. Because it was about the, like, they found the book in this library, right? 
All that, do you remember that? I swear to God. Like, no. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You know who? You know who knows? Um, it? No. Teresa, I'm not sure the New York Library no, has cops without a badge. I'm telling you, we. Uh, you know, now, I don't know. It was part I, of Oprah. I swear Listen, to you, Dave. I don't know if cops without a badge was a part of Oprah's book club. <laughs> I swear. It may have been Jerry Springer. I'm but. telling you, they. I'm telling you, they told me they went. To, I heard. They went to a library and got the book. I swear to God. I'm, I'm telling you. No, no, I believe you. I was like, Jacqueline, no, you know who would know the truth? Like, really? Because I'm telling you, they didn't tell me. It was Jack. And Jacqueline would tell you, like, she would tell you the truth. Like, how they found the book, how they came about it. They kept me in the dark. It was between, like, it was all about the familia. I swear to God. It was, they kept it between the family. They really did. Because I think with me, you know, they thought, you know, my Teresa, they, they knew I liked Danielle. So they probably maybe thought that I would tell Danielle, you know, even though we did have some problems. But I'm telling you, they didn't tell me everything. You know, they didn't. Okay, so the, the moment that really changed reality TV history. Okay, so this is... See, and he doesn't even know. It's the truth. Oh, no, I believe you. No, I'm saying it's a really, like, I'm telling you, they didn't tell me things. Because if you, anybody knows, anybody Italian here? Yeah, okay. So, when you know, you keep it amongst the family. You don't tell, you don't share it with everybody yeah, else. Yeah, and that's how the I blacks mean, are, too. I mean, my family doesn't we do, do it that way. Yeah. Black people, we don't. I mean, you, Italians you. Italians and the black <laughs> folk. <laughs> We ain't going to tell them. Listen, because black people believe in this. Snitches get stitches. Say yeah, Say that. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? All the black people, am I right? Yeah. No, but I'm serious. They didn't tell me. I'm telling you. They didn't tell me. Oh, no. I believe you. Yeah. No. And, and listen, in her defense, I know for a fact they did not tell her because Teresa's sweet and innocent. They didn't want to, like, you know, include her in that. And at the end of the day, was family. So here's Danielle defending Italian. herself. She's talking about, like, you know, what's in the book, what's not true, how she had diarrhea, you know, and <laughs> remember that? She had diarrhea. And wait, and there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. It's so yeah. <laughs> like, you don't know, I'm serious. It was like, a, I had to cut stuff out of my podcast yesterday because Jacqueline was like talking and I was like, oh my God, I got to cut this stuff out. Yeah, it was like a lot of stuff. It maybe, was a lot of stuff. Maybe one day we'll be able to talk about it all. And like, Jacqueline knows it all. No, she does. no. So Danielle said she had diarrhea. She had cramps. She had a blood transfusion. <laughs> she, you know, she needed a, a, a heart monitor. She needed, you know, she, you know, she needed a lot of things, you know. She just, she needed an IV. She just, it was a lot, <laughs> it was a lot going on that night, right? So the, be the best part is when Teresa decided, because again, that's when Caroline Soprano said, it was me. <laughs> Dina's me. Lexi's me. Jacqueline's me. It was me. I did it, right? We're all like, well, that ain't what I was told, Caroline. But girl, you better run with this story, Bill, because we weren't told that. So then Teresa's like, well, I got to ask questions too. So she's like, is that's this when I started asking questions. When did um, you see red? Because up until this point, real talk. I swear. Up until this point. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all this. We shot that show for like like three months, if that, like maybe three months. And Teresa was like the sweetest thing. She was so sweet. She had Gia. <laughs> You know, Melania, you know, the girls Gabriella. were Gabriella, <laughs> the girls were dressed alike, you know, tearing up the clothing store, all that stuff, right? <laughs> like she was just like this sweetie pie. So what made you turn like see red? Um, yeah, Jen, Jen just said it when she said, Teresa, pay attention, please. <laughs> I was like, Well, yeah, I mean, like, like I'm I'm the type, I take it, I take it, I take it, and the, then, yes, yeah, no, no but, but remember, she, she did a few things to me, remember what she said to me at the dance thing, she goes like this, um, I'm not sure, she said to, well, I think she said to Joe or me, um, 
you know, I'm not your wife. Don't speak to me like that. Yeah. That remember that was one. I there was three that. things. Like I swear, there was three things. Uh, yes, she kept, and that's how I am. I take it, I take it, I take it, and then the smallest thing, I fucking go crazy. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Like so. Yes, wait, there was other things. Can you guys help me? So there was, it was the dance thing. Come on, tree hugger. Yeah, come on. Oh, the shore house, right. All right, so she brought this guy to my, it was Joe's friend. She hooked up with a 20, yes, Steve, yes. So she, and then my thing is, like, I I was really old school back there. I'm kind of more. Like, I change now. I'm like, I'm more outgoing now. It's like, I don't care. You want to date a 27 year old and you want to go fuck him? Fine. Go fuck him. I don't care. Yes. But back then, I was just. Everybody like, gets a 27 year old. Yes. <laughs> so back then, I was just, and she, and she just met Joe's friend. And then, I don't know. I just thought it was like a little weird how she did that in front of my kids. And I didn't like that. But it's okay. I mean, whatever. Now I would think differently about that. But I didn't like it that at that time. So that was the second thing. And what was the third thing? There was one more thing. <laughs> what else, guys? <laughs> All right. Maybe it was the... Pa- the, the it was the name pa- change. Pa- yeah. Oh. Well, she said name change. And yeah. Wait. So then I think it was the, the third thing was pay attention, please. And I think that was it. That was the third time that I was, I, I was like, that's it. Did you black out? Yeah. I saw... I, I, like, I felt like she was belittling me, obviously. And that's when I saw red. Yeah. And I just went. And she was attacking Dina. And Dina, I could tell she didn't want to fight. And she, she couldn't defend herself. And then that's. And I'm, I'm like loyal as fuck. So if someone's attacking my friend, I'm going to be right there. Yeah. So and that's why I was there for Dina. Yeah. Now, being from Patterson, New Jersey. Yes. <laughs> So I want to talk about one more of your greatest hits because, and by hits, I don't mean, you know. But you know what, guys? If you ever see your guy with another girl, don't ever hit the girl because it's the guy's fault too. But I was, I was immature at the Not time. Both, I was, I was immature and I hit the girl and I shouldn't have done that. That was so wrong of me. Like, exactly. The guy. Yes. <laughs> So it wasn't the girl's fault, and I and I felt really bad. Yeah. So so then so when the when the table flip happened, I'm a, I'm gonna give y'all some tea. So the table flip happens, right? So you you y'all, y'all saw me like hold Portia down when she, you know, or y'all see me when I was doing Love and Hip Hop, how to get like, you know, I, cause y'all know I love all the girls, and I need to protect all the girls, right? So when she flipped it, mind you, I'm like, I'm like Winnie Houston. Who do I run to? You know, I'm like, do I run to my 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 talent Teresa, or do I run to my Danielle. other talent Danielle? So I didn't. Well, I mean, hindsight is 2020. No, I'm joking. No. So it was it was insane what happened, right? And then afterwards, you know. Teresa calls me. I know. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I was like, right? Yeah. So Teresa calls me. She's super apologetic. You know, she broke some tables. She broke some glass, you know. (laughs) And she's like, what does this mean for me? And I said to her verbatim, baby, you're about to be the greatest reality star (laughs) of all time. And and my... believe him I didn't believe him I was like I was like no oh my god I never did this before I'm so sorry I was so, yeah I'm like she said I'm no like, Carlos I'm like, she really pissed me off I couldn't take her no more you know? and and I said I said I said this will be played on the view this will be played for eternity wait and it was played on the Emmys that year it was played on the Emmys that I said I said and, and mind you I I just rap like Kim and Nene arguing about a fucking cell phone, right? So I'm like, oh, baby, this is going to change television. And sweet Teresa said this. You, you probably don't remember this. Am I going to be a movie star? <laughs> no, I didn't say I did not say that. I don't remember that. No, I... I swear, I was, I was really, I couldn't believe I did that. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I was very, yeah, I was very apologetic. And I'm like, and he, I could tell he was like, 
he was like, he had a grin from, you know, from ear to ear. And I'm like, why is this guy smiling like this? Yeah. So I didn't know. See, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah. How did your life change after that moment? Like, like when, when it aired? Because after you filmed it, you were still feeling regretful because, you, listen, in real life, she's a, she really is a sweetheart. Like, all jokes aside, she's a sweetheart. When that episode aired, how did your life change? Because you were the quintessential Real Housewife raising your daughters, taking them to every single dance class, casting auditions, all of this, the model calls, all of that. When that episode aired, when you flipped the table, what happened? I mean, I live in New Jersey, guys. So it's not like I'm living in L.A. But, like, I mean, obviously where I, you know, when I went to places, everyone noticed me and, like, wanted to take pictures with me and stuff like that. But, again, it's New Jersey. So it's not like it's New York or it's L.A. It's It was different. I mean... Say again? <laughs> no, but I mean, it was different, guys, being in New Jersey because I live in the suburban area, so it wasn't like that. But I mean, every when I used to go to like, um, like when I when I came out with my book, oh my god, the lines were like crazy, like yeah, a thousand, yeah. two thousand people waiting online to sign my book, like that. You know, that meant the world to me. So, so what the the thing that the thing that transpired. A lot of things transpired during the first two seasons, and then the third happened. But the first two, you and Jacqueline were so close. Like, we, I was about to say, we, we used to yeah. call you girls Lucy and Ethel. Yeah. Um, where did things go wrong? Vanessa! Well, hold on. Thank you. <laughs> that, Thank you. That, that simmer. Simmer down, tree huggers. Simmer, simmer down, tree huggers. But, but the thing is this. The thing is this. There's this, and, and, I, and I want you to clear the air. There's this misconception. And obviously, <clears throat> you and Jacqueline have made up. Things are good. I'm so proud of that. And I love, Jacqueline's the best. So, like, Jacqueline's the sweetest, most kindest woman. A lot of people felt that, because this is what happens on some reality shows, right? Let me put y'all up on game in case y'all don't know. A lot of times when you're on reality TV, on an on a ensemble show of women, oftentimes one person emerges as the breakout star, yeah. right? A lot of people did say that no one predicted that you were going to be the breakout star and that some of those people were your fellow castmates and that during seasons one and two, you had these real friendships. Did you feel like people calling you the star, saying, you know, this is the Teresa show? Did you feel like that may have a little bit to do with the turn of your relationship with Caroline and Jacqueline? I mean, maybe with Caroline. I didn't feel like that with Jacqueline because like, we were friends like seven years before we you know, started the show. So, and not even with Dina. I didn't feel like that with Dina, but maybe with Caroline. Um, but yeah, I mean, Jacqueline and I were really, tr you know, true friends. We really were. And I think what changed her mind, obviously, someone said it out there. Yes. And, um, and you know what? Also, she had, um, she, I gave, I, I gave birth. Thank you. Honey. I gave, we both had babies together. I, you know, I gave birth to Adri she gave birth to Nicholas. I gave birth to Adriana and, um, you know, not in the beginning, but, you know, after a year, you know, she was going through a lot with Nicholas. And then that's when, um, you know, she came on the show. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and she, she admitted she got, you know, she got manipulated by her. So when it came to Caroline though, like, was it, do you, do you, because Caroline, you always saw her as like, you know, like the big sister kind of. Yeah, Caroline, I just respected her because she was Dina's sister. But I really wasn't that close to Caroline. Like, I was close to Dina and... Ja yeah, I was close to Dina and Jacqueline. And Caroline, she was just always, you know, Dina's older sister. So, yeah. Damn. Simmer down, tree hugger. <laughs> did it, did it... 
when it came to your your marriage with Joe, right? Um, again, I was there the early days. Like you two were madly in love, you know, so into each other. Um, when when everything started to come out based on you know the stuff of the IRS, all of those things, right? That you had to go through. Did you ever feel for a moment that this man who you trusted disrespected you to the point where you had no idea what was going on and he put you in that position because you felt like it's your job as my husband to protect me? And did you feel at the time when all this was unfolding that he did the total opposite of that? <laughs> I know he didn't mean to do what he, I, I know he didn't, he didn't want me to get to like, first of all, I was not involved in anything that he did. I signed, I thought it was two houses that I signed, but I only signed one home. He was flipping homes and I went to one closing. He used my credit. I had, my credit was over 800 and um, thank you. And then until he ruined it. <laughs> So he, he was flipping homes, and um, so all he, I guess he he had a lot of homes. You know, his credit was like out there a lot. So he said, "Babe, can I use your credit?" He's like, um, "I have to. Can you sign on one home?" And I was like, "All right." So I went to a closing. I signed. That was it. That's all I did. I didn't know that I was gonna get in trouble Where's for that. that? Where's that fucking judge? I. <laughs> I mean, uh, did you hear what happened to the judge? Oh my god! Oh my god! Teresa, so bad. <laughs> no man. Teresa, you are so bad. No, so anyway, um, so then one day they, the you know the government comes knocking on our door and says, you know, your husband hasn't paid taxes. You know, he wait. Somebody knocked on your door. The government. They came to your house? Yes. I thought they sent a letter certified. No. They come to your crib? Yes. Are wait, they, are wait, they right, can I admit, can I admit one thing that, and another thing that he did about the cash? The what? The cash. Go ahead. All right, guys. All right, when I went to go buy the furniture, yes. <laughs> Now, do you guys think I walked in with the hundred and forty thousand dollars cash? <laughs> I mean, no. So this is what <laughs> I had two hundred dollars on me, and Jacqueline had three hundred dollars on her. And guess whose idea was it to go like this? <laughs> So, see, you guys are getting some, you know, some... Okay. Yeah. No. So, I just wrapped Atlanta Housewives, uh, right? We all love Kim Zosiak, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's a little divided, but okay, I'll deal with it. Um, I like Kim. Okay, leave her alone. Okay. Okay, so, season one of Atlanta Housewives, right? So Kim Zosiak had this lover named Big Daddy, Big Daddy. <laughs> right? Right? So, okay. So, Big Papa. So, oh, Big Papa. Big, big Papa, Papa, Big Papa. I said so, Big Daddy. <laughs> so, so Kim Zosiak will always walk around in cash and cigarettes and red solo cups. But, but, but you know. But cash, cash, cash. So she paid for everything in cash. Remember when she went to the Escalade dealership and she wrote a check for $60,000? And remember when she went to Deshaun Snow off, you know, um, auction? You know, when nobody bought nothing? <laughs> but, 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 Kim, but Kim bought the, the bracelet and she called Pop. Papa, can I get this bracelet? You know? <laughs> So I said, oh, this, this, this one was everything. So Teresa said, me and Jack are going shopping. I said, bitch, break cash. I mean, so, <laughs> so he, I'm like, <laughs> so he asked me, do you have cash on you? I'm like, I have 200. He asked, J Jacqueline always had cash on her. So Jacqueline had 300. So he said, go like this. <laughs> and then they show the calculator, 140,000. I'm like, so, so what? 
So I don't know. Sound like that. <laughs> so I don't know if the government came knocking on my door because of that. <laughs> Or they came knocking because other people called, you know. <laughs> but anyway, but guys, Joe had a partner. I don't want to say his name. Joe had a partner, Sleazeball. So, and just, that's his name? Yeah. Oh. So, anyway, so just think about it. I went to jail and not his partner. And I really, I mean, I mean, guys, I did my time. I did what I had to do. But I never was involved in Joe's shit. Thank you. And he had a partner, so sleazeball, yeah. We will wait for that Netflix true crime series to drop in 2026. Like, Produced I, by Kingdom yeah, Ring I Entertainment on TV. I know. I hope they make a movie. I think they're going to make a movie Who out of my life. Who would you want to play you in a movie? I don't know. Maybe myself. No. <laughs> See, I'm trying to, who, who could play Teresa in a movie? Who could play me? Oh, oh Melania. Melania. Oh, yeah. Melania. She's yes. a gangster, too. Yes. Melania. Okay, so so all of that happened. There's this infamous scene where you guys run a winery. Yes. Oh. <laughs> and you guys are like, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid of the great wine because that's what we do. And then Joe walks away. He gets on the phone. And he says, my, <laughs> my, my B word for wife, right? Yeah. Um, when you saw, because we, we never talked about this. When yeah. you saw that on camera. I call, I, I was so pissed. I'm like, I think Andy Cohen called me. I'm like, my husband did not, because this is the thing. You know, when you're with your partner, you know what you guys call each other? You know, you guys call each other names. I'm like, my husband's never called me the C word. I'm like, I swear. I'm like, he's never. I'm like, you guys edited that in. They're like, they're like, Teresa, no, we didn't. So Andy Cohen called me. He's like, Teresa, I watched it. He's like, we did not. Nobody edit that in. Your husband said it. When I watched it, I was in shock. No, I didn't cry. No, I didn't cry. He just slept on the couch for two weeks. I was pissed. Yeah, I was really pissed. I, re I really was. And he was really upset, too. And I'm like, I can't believe you call me in that. I'm like, you've never even said that to me. No, he would not. He, he would never. Louis doesn't even curse. <laughs> <laughs> Louis doesn't even curse. Yeah, no, he would not. Did you? Was that? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but going back to that moment, did you? I was really upset. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to leave my husband for calling me the C word. Because I was like, how do I justify that to my kids? Because he called me the C word. I don't know. I, I, I was thinking about that. But I was. he told me he was talking to his worker. That's what he told me. Yeah, he told me he was talking to his worker. You know, one thing I know about you, you it's, it's what you said. You weren't going to leave in the event that, okay, people are saying he's cheating, whatever. You and I had this conversation before, and it broke my heart, is... And I, and I wonder if you have forgiven him today. Because yes. one thing you did say was what Joe did forced you to be away for a year and then you lost both of your parents. And one thing I will say about Teresa, this, and this is, I'm being very serious here, this woman adored her parents. Yes. I mean, I mean, to the to the point where we would the the good the good old days of season one and two of Jersey. Do you remember this? We would film for hours. We got Dave Sisson in the back who did audio for us. Remember Dave? Yeah, Wave Dave. Yeah, I, I said, yeah, I know. So the way the Italian family works, okay? They will cook pasta and all these all these dishes, and when it's time for us to go home, we would have to stay in the house <laughs> and eat with them. And then, and then her parents would come over and cook for us. Like her mom would like, would like, hey Carlos, I made you lunch today. And I'm like, Mom. like it was, it, no, like they were always at the house, and your daughters were so in love with your with your parents. Mm -hmm. um, 
And and one thing I know for sure is the fact that God will always bless you because in the Bible it does speak to honor thy father and mother. And 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 the woman and the woman that you are. And this is not like we we didn't film a lot of your parents because they weren't into like the TV. They they supported you. What happened behind the scenes that you guys never saw was they were always over. She she always took care of them, took them to doctor's appointments. And, you know, when her mom passed, her, you know, her dad moved in with them. And you really devoted your life. And what I don't think people talk about, like, listen, we're having fun talking about 10 and 2 and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> country club and table flips. But what I don't think people really talk about a lot is the strength of a woman. Yes. And and I don't know too many women. That 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 could that that could handle that. Like, how were you able to find forgiveness in your heart to Joe? Because at one point in time, you blamed him for not being able to spend time with your parents before they passed. Yeah, that was um. Well, I you know I came home. Joe left three months later, and then my mom passed away from when I came home eight months later. So after Joe left, Joe left three months, my mom passed away five months after that. So that's when I knew it was over with Joe. Like, cause I was like, I was so upset. I was like, I blamed him for losing time with, you know, with my mom. I'm like, you know, I lost that time with my mom. And, um, yeah. And, he, you know, I know he didn't mean, he, I know he didn't mean to do it. Like I, he, and I, he, he adored my parents. He really did. I know he did. And uh, I mean, now we're, we're, you know, of course I, for, I forgave him. Um, and, you know, I, I believe now it's like, I, I was like, I kept asking God, why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through this? But I had to go through all this to meet Louie. Yes! Yeah. yeah. And um, I really do believe that. Like, you know, I mean, and I asked my parents, I swear, guys, I asked my parents to send me a great guy um, on Bay Boulevard. I looked up in the sky and somebody said to me, they're like, if you ever want anything, you should ask your parents. And I never believed that. Your parents. And so if you have deceased parents, ask your parents. They're like, really talk to your, you know, whoever, whoever's deceased, if you're close to them, you should ask them that they'll grant you your gift. And I was like, really? So what, like, I swear my, my father passed away in April and, um, I think it was, I don't know, June, I swear, like in, in June, I got a shore house in, at the Jersey Shore, and I looked up in the sky, and I started talking to my parents, and I said, Mom, Papa, send me a guy that's everything you've ever wanted for me, and more, like, and my mom always wanted a guy that treated me like a queen, that spoke so sweet to me, that didn't curse at me, like, wouldn't say curse words, because my father hated when he cursed, you know how my father used to hate when he cursed? Yes. He hated cursing. And I just spilled my guts to him. And then I swear, guys, three weeks later on that same street, that's where I met Louie. Yeah. I did. And um, I swear. And it's like, and I'm like, and then, thank you. And then I was like that. And then I finally got my answer. So, guys, if you go through something bad and you don't understand why you're going through it, just don't give up. And, like, you finally get your answer. Like, I didn't get, look, I got my answer, like, so many years later. And it was because to meet Louie. But I had to have my kids with Joe, which I have four beautiful daughters with Joe. Yes, and, you know, he was a great husband. You, you, you oh, saw. Joe was he, great. He was. Yeah. He was a great, you know. But He's I guess very old school. I had my journey. Like, I had to go through all that and have my kids with Joe and everything. And I know he didn't mean to hurt me. Like, trust me, he tried to take the blame. But then he said to me, he's like, damn, he's like, they want you more than they want me. Is because I was on TV. They wanted to make an example out of me. And, um... So thank you. So that's what they wanted to do. So it's okay. I did what I had to do. I worked out every day. I wrote my book, Turning the Tables. I did yoga. So I could, you know, you know, I did go to jail, but it's okay. I mean, I, it's but okay. I, There's a lot of but I, people. But I did, I did it with a smile on my face. <laughs> no, but I did do it with a smile on my face because I knew in my heart, I'm like, I know I didn't do anything. So I was like, okay, there's a reason why I have to go through this. And finally, years later, he, Louis was my reason. So, yeah. Stand up, Louis, for a second, please. 
I want to bring it. <laughs> I love you. Louie, can you come to the stage really fast? <laughs> Can we get an extra chair for Louie for a second? Give it up for Louie in the love bubble. Okay. Wait, guys, he's Mexican, Dominican, and Puerto Rican. <laughs> so Latino in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. If you've never been with Latino, you should try him out. But not, but not mine. Definitely not mine. <laughs> so I, I need to, I need, okay. I need to know about the first day. Uh, uh, oh, hold on, Patterson Posse. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I need to know this because you know, I have a lot of game. <laughs> yeah. So back in my day when I was single, you know, I got my friends in the audience, Kamar, you know, Terrence, Carlita, you know, they all. Amber, Trisha, you know, the girls, you know, they know. So I have a lot of game. Because when I see somebody, they know I just grab you and say, you're mine, and we're going to like, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I do. Yes, and it works all the time. Because <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, when you... Well, thank you. God has been good to me. I'm plant-based. I drink alkaline water, and I have a hook and a curve. So the thing is this. What was it? How did you snag Teresa Judice? Like, who? What What was your game like? My, 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 my game was really simple. I was sitting. I had uh, stayed at Jersey Shore um, July 17th. Um, I the day before I took my company public on the Nasdaq, and yeah, so very so, smart, so, so, very so, smart, so, yes. So the babe, so um, my assistant says, "Where do you want to go for? Where do you want to take a break with the kids?" I was full time parent of two children, so I went to the Jersey Shore. She rented a house for me, and I was sitting on the stoop, and Teresa walked by, and I thought she waved at me. And I'm sitting there with my son. I'm always with my kids, right? So sitting there with my son and... I was looking at his white Range Rover yeah. with the black rims. And I was like, oh my God. Yes, I'm, like, I'm like, that's my car. I'm telling my I friends. know that's my yeah. bitch. We like, yeah. is it rims <laughs> on the... No, I swear. You are a girl. That's my own No, heart. I said, no, I said, I'm like, that guy has my car. I was telling my two friends. I'm like, that guy has my car. Same car as mine. The white Range Rover. Yeah, white, white Range Rover with the black rims. He had the same car as me. So go on, babe. So, <laughs> so I, he thought I waved. Did it? So I thought she waved. I waved back. And then she's like, just looking at me like, what are, what are you doing? My son <laughs> my son looks at me and she's like, you know, your friend. They yeah. just, were just getting close to the middle of the street. So I just, Dana, Dana Fortunato. So my married friend went up to him. Yeah. 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 And said what? She said, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? So, I said, I, then I looked at Teresa. I didn't really, I didn't know who you really were. Yeah. Be, yeah. it's so, no, he yeah, okay. did. His son, his, okay. <laughs> no, his son told him who I, who I was. Oh, yeah. No, so my son said, Dad, you don't know who this is. He pulled out a picture of so her. So, wait, phone. so when you saw Teresa, you had no idea she was the iconic legend. No, 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 in that moment, no. When Louis, okay. when my son Louis pulled out the picture, I look at her and I look at her and I'm like, You didn't tell me you were famous? Because then it all came together who she was, being on TV and all the stuff with your husband. And so we, we, um, holy shit, it was crazy. <laughs> so we met, we met there and, uh, I just gave her, I gave two of her, I have two business cards on me and I gave Teresa one of them. I gave her other friend a business card. I was wearing a pair of shorts, just finished running. My hair was all messed up. It's very sweaty. Um, and she goes, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm here with all these kids. And she's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a full-time father. I got two kids back there, five, six kids swimming in the lake. And I'm just here doing nothing bored on my mind. And we... We separated for like, you know, we said a few words to get five minutes or so. Then, then we packed up my car. I was packing my car to go back to the house because um, I was down at the shore and I was telling my son, I'm like, let's just go back home. We have a pool at the house. The dogs are there. Let's, let's leave. And then she walked by. We met. And then as we left, we pulled in front of Teresa and I go, Teresa, you didn't, you didn't, what did I say to you? Like you didn't. No, you, you said. Um, you didn't tell, you didn't, you didn't tell me your name, Teresa. No, no. He said, my son wanted to know why I didn't ask for your number, Teresa. Yeah. Teresa, yeah. So yeah, she Teresa. said, uh, he said, my son wanted to know why I didn't ask for your number, Teresa. 
So his son told him who I was, and then he's like, "Why don't you ask Teresa for a number?" Yeah. So he came up to me. He's like, "Why didn't?" He's like, "That's what he said." He, you know. He so said, she shut it down. She says, "If I want to talk to you, so I'll, call, said, I'll, I'll text you. I'll call you." <laughs> yeah. Immediately. And right away, my, right away, I was like, I was like, I was like, damn, okay, like the. So, so I said, we're out of here. You know? him, but I let, but I didn't give him my phone number. Yeah, I didn't get her phone number. We left the well, shore. I felt because I was embarrassed to give my she phone number in talk. front of his son. You never let me talk. <laughs> I don't talk to Risa. So, so we, um, so we leave. Uh, my son's in the back of the seat, with, back of the car with his, with, her, with his girlfriend. We had had a poem, but a half hour into the ride, she texts me, and she said something to the. I still have the text. Something to the effect that like, you know, it was nice meeting you. Let's let's talk. Let's get together sometime. Whatever. So that night, we went, I went home and my friend texted him. No, she went out in the shore having a great time that night. She gets home, probably all sauced up around eleven forty-five at night. I'm in my backyard. I'm like. Teresa, right? So she called. She you know, texted me, whatever. Could we you know, want to talk? So we talked. Her friend asked me like a hundred questions, and uh, we were on the phone till like five, five o'clock in the morning. The next day, same thing happened. We were talking, and you know, we get we're texting a little bit. And I said, you know, we talked again around eleven thirty at night. The end of the night, kids go to sleep. You're done partying in the shore. And she's like, "What are you doing?" And I, and I literally lived a really simple life. I lived in a town of New Jersey. I didn't, you know, I had my kids and. Uh, we started talking that night, and then I had like 50 questions for you, right? So the first night I asked him 50 questions. My girlfriend, I was my girlfriend was with me. She's like, "Let's ask him questions." I'm like, "Oh my!" She had we asked him 50 questions. I'm yeah, like, yeah. "This guy's never gonna call me At again." Least. I'm like a cosmopolitan. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah, "Thank yeah, you very magazine. much." I'm like, "He's never gonna call me again." Yeah. Then so the next night he asked me 50 questions. So it was cute. Yeah. So uh, first night she asked me questions. Second night she asked me questions. The next day. I had like a little pool party in my house with some neighbors, whatever. They were celebrating what I just did that week at work and I didn't call her. And then, so that night you text me and we get on the phone and she says, listen, if you, I'm not playing games. If you don't call me, you know, I'm not going to know if you like me or not. I said, listen, I, I, I'm just on the assumption that you're busy and you're this, now I've learned about her. Now I'm like on Google all day. I'm like, holy shit, I met Teresa Judice. You know, I had to call my, my, mother, my mother, my sisters. One of my sisters was a big fan of Teresa and had gone to book signings and all that stuff. So we, um, she said to me, basically, if you don't call me, I'm not going to know if you'll like me. So I said, listen, I'm sorry about that, but I've been hurt. And I didn't, you know, and you're busy. And I kind of like, I was like getting, like selling myself out of the situation in a sense, right? <laughs> and then um, from there, it just, from there, it just took a life of its own. Was it? Yeah. How long did it take Teresa for Louie to, you know? Four months. It took four months? Four months, yeah. You go, girl! You go! We, we took it. Teresa, four but, months? Yeah, but it was we both of us. It, it was both of us, yeah. In the gay community, it takes us four hours. Are you talking about four months? I need to know exactly what I, what I did myself into. Yeah. Well, right away? Four months? Well, we got to, you know, we were dating. It was COVID. It was COVID. I had, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I yeah. have kids. He has kids. Yeah. We, didn't okay. sleep, we didn't sleep at each other's houses. Our dates were walking, long walks, five miles, six yeah. miles, was- 10 miles. And then, um, and all we did was kiss. I think the first time I kissed her, we were walking in the street up by her town. And I said, I said to her, this is really funny. I'm like, do you know anybody around here? She's like, no. And I, I kissed her and she came back. She goes, yeah, but they all know me. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is crazy. You know, like, I was like, you know, I don't it's know true. Really true. Yeah. <laughs> we love you, Louie. Give it up for Louie. I know. He's Louis, ladies and gentlemen. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. See, are you guys having a good time? Okay, okay, okay. So look, as we sort of come to a close, right? I could talk to you all day. I know, we could. I love the Rain Johns and the Tree Huggers. They are one blended, crazy-ass family. <laughs> Don't be sleeping cousins, though. You know, <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all remain cordial. But as, as things come to a close... When it comes to your life right now, do you have any regrets? That's such a hard question to ask. Um, I mean, I go back and forth with it just because like, it's like so it is very toxic right now. So it's like I'm like, oh, but I mean, I guess this is part of my journey. So you never say no regrets, right? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I had to go through all this. 
You know, so you right? You got to say that because, you know, I mean, I feel like I'm still, you know, I'm still not in. You know, I guess there's parts that that I do enjoy. I'm still not enjoy. You know, it's like it's not. I'm not like loving it because it's like it's, it's still toxic. It's really toxic, you know. So I can't wait. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna be on House of Villains. Yeah. 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 So you know what? That was a fun show. And at first, I didn't want to do House of Villains. I'm like, House of Villains? Am, Carlos, am I a villain? Am I a villain? See, see that's the thing. I, you know what's so funny? Because when you, when I, when I found out you were doing House of Villains, I was like. I don't think she's a villain. She's a force multiplier, yeah. right? <laughs> but, I, but but then I'm like, okay, well, she definitely knows how to pop her shit. Right, so, so that's yeah. where I'm a villain because I flip the table, you know, I go at people. So I'm like, all right, so I can't wait for you guys to see House of Villains because I think you're going to see, a, you know, the, I think you're going to really see the real Teresa on House of Villains. So thank you. So... Yeah, and I met I met so many people on House of Villains, like people from Love and Hip Hop on there. Yeah, Safari's yeah. on there. Yes, Safari, and then from and then um from um, Drag Race, and from Survivor, Survivor, Survivor. Yeah. Survivor um, who, who else? I was on there with Wes. Wes. Yeah. Yes. Wait, oh, Candy, Candy Muse. Yes. Candy Muse of Drag. I love candy. I love candy. Yes. I was on there with um, the girl, um, with uh, the other girl, um, the one from um, like, wait, what? Tiffany. Tiffany. T- uh, Tiffany from yes, yeah, Tiffany. Yeah, I love New York. Yeah. So you feel like that show really? Wait, and there was oh Camilla, Cam- Camille, Camille. Yes, yes. Yeah. She was from like um like. Yeah. Bad, badass girls. Badass Baddies. girls. Yes. Baddies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I was, it was so much fun. Yeah. So that, that comes out soon. So make sure you guys check that out. That comes yes. out on E and then Peacock as well. So at the end of the day, you. I did three Super Bowl commercials. That was a lot yeah. of fun. <laughs> Talk your shit, Teresa. Yes. So all that's fun. You know, I mean, yeah. You know, housewives, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's, listen. Every listen. Everything happens for a reason. You are you're built for this. Before I let you go, you are in a room probably for the first time in a long time. This room is full of your supporters. It's yeah. the tree huggers yeah. who hold you down. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I mean, I do have to say, I've never been around haters. So thank you. I step on my show, but say thank you very much. Yeah. So I, I want to say this because I have the raindrops, and the raindrops we we have a very special relationship, and I and I love all of them. What is it that you would like to say to your tree huggers? Because they be on Twitter, girl, reading the girls about your behalf, honey. I be rocking people, honey. I be reading the girls. So I so so I want y'all to remain quiet. Because y'all queen, I will love for you all the very special guests who paid to be here. I want you guys to hear from your queen how she feels about the support of the fan base that is affectionately called the Tree Huggers. Yeah, I, I love the name Tree Huggers. So thank you so much, guys, for being so supportive and being my Tree Huggers and I mean, whoever's been watching since season one, I think you, yeah, thank you. I think, I think you guys really know who I am. And yeah, I mean, listen, I don't take any shit. Sometimes I take it, I take it, I take it till I explode. Um, but I have evolved throughout the years, right? I have grown and, um, I've gotten, you know, to be calmer, not as crazy as I was, but I think you guys like the craziness in me. Yes. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for always loving and supporting me. It means the world. Thank you. For, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would like to end with this. I would like, okay, so you were able to, to you were able to express your love to Louie, to your tree huggers and the raindrops. And I would like to express my love to you. Um, okay? I want you to know this. Give me your hand. I want you to know this. Okay? You are a phenomenal woman. I have... Simmer down. Can I have the floor, please? 
<laughs> me and her never had this conversation before. So I'm going to have it in front of y'all, okay? You mean the world to me. You are such a good girl. Thank you. You have not changed one bit. Thank you. You are still the same sweet woman who I met in 2009. Okay? And, 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 and all you ever wanted to do in life, all you ever wanted to do in life was to make sure your daughters were able to live a life where they never depended on a man. And, and, and we have... We have Gia with, with law school. We have the beautiful Gabriella going to University of Michigan, which is a hard school to get into. You are, you, I, I sometimes marvel at the strength that you have because you are oftentimes going through so many battles, not only just in entertainment, but personally. And that's why when it comes to me, you and I may not talk every single day, we may go months without talking, a couple of years, just because life happens. But I need you to know, as I look into your beautiful eyes, you are my friend, and I love you, and I'm so fucking proud of you. Thank okay? you. Thank you guys so Thank much for coming you. out. Thank you guys. Okay? Make sure you guys download Teresa's new podcast. Yeah. Turning the tables. Yeah. Turning the tables. Episodes drops every Wednesday. So make sure you guys like and subscribe. And subscribe to Reality with the King, honey. Yes, yes, yes. On YouTube. And listen to my raindrops. Y'all some bad mother effers, yes, baby. Yes, you are. Yes, this is so much fun. And New York City, this has been a fun night. I love you all and miss me. Yes, love you guys. I'm turning the tables. I'm turning the tables. I'm turning a new page, new day. Yeah. Good